The sole purpose of this video is to provide a basic overview and orientation of your new apparatus. This video is not intended to act as or replace individualized driver operator training. Individual fire departments may base guidelines, policies, and procedures tailored for best practices. Pierce Manufacturing and Hughes Fire Equipment representatives are not liable for injuries caused from acts resulting from actions inconsistent with the information provided within this video and or accompanying manuals. Refer to the Operation and Maintenance Manual for complete details relating to the components and features of this apparatus. Only trained personnel should operate this vehicle or perform maintenance. You are responsible for learning how to operate this fire apparatus under all conditions without having to refer to the manual while operating at an emergency incident. This video will discuss types of warnings and caution labels. It is your responsibility to locate and identify each of the labels and understand the importance and associated hazards. Warning labels will point out procedure that must be taken or action that must be avoided to guard against the possibility of serious injury or death. Caution labels will advise you that there is a risk of damage to property if certain precautions are not followed. Continuous training, reviewing of operation and service manuals, developing good standardized practices will assist driver operators with a more complete understanding of the components and operation of this fire apparatus. As the driver operator of this vehicle, you are responsible for understanding the function of each component of the apparatus, maintaining control of the fire apparatus at all times while in operation, make operational and functional changes while operating at an emergency without having to read operator's instructions or safety warning labels, operate manual override and emergency shutdown procedures immediately if a component fails to operate properly. Components location may vary with each Pierce Fire Apparatus. Review the exact location of each component prior to operation. Major inconsistencies between your vehicle and the information contained in this video should be directed to your sales representative. Safe operation of any vehicle is the responsibility of the driver operator. You must learn the location and function of all controls, switches, gauges, valves, inlets, and discharges. Due to a higher center of gravity, heavy trucks have a significantly higher rollover tendency than other types of vehicles. To reduce the risk of rollover, avoid making sharp turns, excessive speed, and avoid abrupt maneuvers. In the event of a rollover crash, an unbelted person is significantly more likely to become injured or die than a person wearing a seatbelt. In the event of a crash, unbuckled occupants can also become a hazard to other occupants as they may be thrown around inside the cab. Seatbelts are required while in operation. Please refer to your warranty certificates for details and information enclosed in your manuals. Customer installed equipment must be mounted to withstand road travel and comply with NFPA 1901. Modifications such as drilling holes or welding to structural frame components of the chassis are not permitted. Contact Pierce for instruction and review of non-structural sheet metal or other dissimilar metals for modification. Follow the radio installation guide for further assistance on installing or mounting electronics. Before placing your new apparatus into service, Perform a primary inspection of key components of the apparatus, including all fluid levels, anti-lock braking systems, electronic stability control, and automatic traction control. Weigh your apparatus to ensure that it conforms to axle and brake ratings. Never exceed the gross axle rating printed on the label inside the cab. Exceeding these ratings could lead to reduced component life, personal injury, or death. Review the use of auxiliary braking systems, compression brake, exhaust brake, electronic retarder, and hydraulic retarder. Before placing the apparatus in service, refer to the operational maintenance manuals. 
information on the operation and maintenance functions for the components such as the pump, pressure governor, and foam systems along with other options is provided in either the Pierce manuals and or other manufacturer support information delivered with the apparatus. If you need more information, please contact Hughes Fire Equipment. Congratulations, Cowlitz to Washington on your new fire apparatus, job number 31142. Please utilize this job number when referencing your new apparatus with Hughes Fire Equipment and Pierce Manufacturing. Let's get started on a brief orientation of your new apparatus. Starting down at the very front bumper, you'll find dual air horns on the right and left. Located in the center, you'll find an electronic siren and PA speaker. Let's move up onto the bumper itself. On the passenger side, you'll find a large diameter intake. Just beside that large diameter intake, you'll find tub storage well for additional hose and also straps for securing that hose. Located in the center, you'll find an additional strap. Moving all the way to the driver's side, you'll find an additional tub storage with straps for securing the hose and also a two and a half inch discharge port. On the side of the uh, bumper, you'll find emergency warning lights on the right and left side. Let's move up onto the body. You'll find your turn indicators right and left. Moving up from that location, you'll find your headlight cluster. The inner beam will be the high beam and the outer is the low. Also on the side, you'll find an emergency warning light and also a marker light. Moving up onto the top above the headlight cluster, you'll find forward facing emergency lights. Located in the center of the grill, you'll find a mechanical siren. Just below or behind the Pierce logo, you'll find your latch to release the hood. Let's go ahead and take a look at some close-ups here. Here's that two and a half inch discharge gated down to an inch and a half. Showing here the front bumper in the center area. We'll move to the opposite side. This is gonna be the large diameter bumper intake. You'll also find on the side of that the front inlet air bleed. And here is an example of where that latch is located behind the Pierce logo. Once we access that, you'll find additional instructions here for tilting the cab of your apparatus. And on the far left, you'll find your coolant location. Let's move over, move over to the right hand side. You'll find this red switch here. This is the selector switch for raising and lowering the cab. And then this is going to be a push button on a coiled cord so you can step back, push the button, and raise or lower the cab. Also located in this area is the power steering fluid. It's located in the black cap on the right hand side. Let's go ahead and take a look all the way over to the passenger side. You'll find the windshield wiper fill location. And now let's take a look at the front windshield area. Seamless front windshield, three windshield wipers, in addition with running lights located at the top. At the very top, you'll find your emergency warning light bar. Located in the center of that light bar, you'll find your forward-facing Opticom. And then just overhead of the light bar, you'll find a right and left go light controlled inside from within the cab. Let's take a look at the side of the apparatus. On the door handles, you have keyed locks. Moving to the right, you'll find at all points of entry your grab handles. And moving to the very far right, just next to the door and the door handle, you'll find a push button code to access the locking system. Let's go ahead and take a look at midship here. We'll talk about the components within this area. First, let's start in the upper left hand corner with a two and a half inch discharge port. Just beneath that, you'll find an additional two and a half inch discharge port. Let's move over to the right in the center, Pierce logo with the Eagle American flag. This is gonna be your large diameter intake. And then we'll move all the way down to the very base. This is gonna be a two and a half inch auxiliary inlet. And at the very bottom, these are the associated drains with all of those discharges and inlets. Close up here of that auxiliary, two and a half inch inlet. Let's take a look at the side here. This is gonna be your auxiliary foam functions for inlet, strainer, and drains. To the right, you'll find the air supply. This is a twist, not a pull. And just beneath that, you'll find your air outlet. 
Let's go ahead and move upward from this location. First, we're going to find on the left a uh, storage strap here to ensure for safety. There is a ladder with inside this area. And also on the right, you'll find additional cross-lay hose storage, speed loads. And just beneath that, you'll find a warning label regarding entanglement for those hoses coming off the side of the apparatus. Just above that, or at the very top of this section, you'll find board storage location. And then as we look down at the very base, you'll once see that uh, warning label, but just right next to it, you'll find a switch which allows you to remove those uh, speed loads and also the discharge port. Let's go ahead and move just up above this section here. You'll find additional storage location or cross lay location here for hose, depending on your department's needs. Let's go ahead and look at the pump panel. This is behind the roll-up compartment door. At the very top is where we're going to start. And first, this is a pump engaged light. If your pump is properly engaged, this light will illuminate. We'll move to the left hand side here for some warning instructions here seeking the owner's manual and then just beneath that you'll find your minimum operational maintenance schedule for 150 200 and 250 we'll talk about that in a moment to the right you're going to find the foam a tank this is an indicator moving to the right you'll find your master intake further to the right in the gray area again you're going to find the master discharge just beneath those two gauges, you're going to find the test ports for vacuum and pressure. They're currently capped. And then let's move all the way to the right. You'll find an amber indicator light here for the PCM fault. And just beneath that, you'll find an audible speaker. Let's go ahead and back over to that minimum maintenance schedule here. Let's take a look here. You can see 150, 200, and 250 PSI associated uh, GPMs and RPMs with that. It also houses the job number and also the pump number. Let's go ahead and start at the very top here of your discharges. These are all foam capable. You can see they're labeled. This is that front discharge. As we move over across, you'll find in green here, the officer side pre-connect. And then moving over in the blue section, you'll find the driver's side pre-connect. And then at the very last position here, you're gonna find the 1.75 rear connect, uh, or pre-connect. Also to the right, you're going to find your uh, fire pump primer. There's instructions underneath for 1,000 RPMs. And then moving over here, you're going to find the 2.5 inch rear pre-connect. And then at the very far right, you're going to find your Pierce governor. And in the center of that Pierce governor, you're going to find your water level for your tank water. Let's move further down from this location here. This is going to be your extender for your L card. This is for your monitor on the top. And then we're going to move down to the tank fill recirculating line. They are locking valves. And also the tank to pump. Moving further to the right, you'll find your open and closed for the inlet here. You have some instructions here for your Husky 12 foam system. Just beneath that, you can find the layout of that Husky foam system. Let's look to the right hand side in red. This is going to be your control module for that Husky foam system. All the way to the very far right, this is your deluge discharge. And then as we look down to the very bottom, these are going to be uh, Akron electric valves. And you can see one is for driver's side and the other for uh, large diameter inlet. Let's move down to the very bottom. Starting at the lower left, you'll find your push to talk, also volume control for your headset, David Clark. Moving to the right, you're going to find some drains here. Once again, these two are both turns, not pulls. And then we'll look at this access door. And then at the very base, you can see all the color coded and labeled drains for each of those valves. Let's go ahead and look inside that compartment there access door. Um, this is going to be your foam system in the yellow handle. And then just above that, uh, you'll find your manual pump override. That's the protected switch there with the amber indicator. Let's go ahead and move to the side of the pump panel you'll find your EXM. This is going to be for your master stream device on top of the apparatus controls. And just beneath that in the gray area, you'll find your air horn in red and then future switches if needed. Here's a close up of that Elkhart Brass EXM. Generalized view here to the right hand side, you can see all of the uh, three pull out shelves here to access those. There's a small gray push down latch to gain those access. Located in the center, you'll find an additional pull-out drop-down shelf. And also in the very rear section, you'll find two shelves, one fixed at the top, and the next one at the bottom is a pull-out style. You'll also find this bar, which is a 12-volt access point behind that. 
Located in the front wheel area, you'll find additional bottle storage location here. And we look to the rear section, you're going to find your in silver cap. This is your diesel fuel fill location. Fold that lap down and you can see that this is going to be a 4.5 US gallon DEF, which is a blue cap. To back of the rear wheels, you're going to find your folding wheel chocks. And here's a generalized view of the rear of the apparatus. Let's break down some of the components within this area. First, starting on the left and right, you're going to find your turn, brake, reverse, and emergency light cluster in the very lower sections. You have a ladder that has the ability to extend and drop down. Please read and seek information on how to operate that. Located at the very top, you're going to find storage location for your rigid hose. At the base, you'll find an attachment point in the center, tow hook. And then let's go ahead and move up to the center behind this roll-up compartment door. We'll talk about that in the next few minutes. Located just above that, you'll find your backup reverse camera. Slightly above that, you'll find your traffic advisor located from the cab is your control. And then all the way up to the very top, you'll find your adjustable hose de bed divider. Let's move to the right-hand side behind the compartments here. First, the longer compartment is going to house your ground ladders. The upper compartment will handle folding ladder and also long tool storage like pike poles, for example. And then we'll move up to the side. This is going to be a extended floodlight, which can rotate 360 degrees. The switch down at the lower right hand corner is going to be the control for that 360 degree floodlight. Let's take a look at some close ups here. This is your backup camera located in the center. Just above that is the traffic advisor. The shelves in the center of this compartment, bottom shelf pulls out. The top shelf is also pull out, but it's also adjustable up and down. Let's take a look in those compartments. You can see here you have a 24 foot extension and there's also a 12 foot roofer in this compartment. Moving up from this location into that smaller compartment just above the 24 and the 12 foot ladder, you'll find a 10 foot folding attic ladder. You're also going to find pike pole storage in the upper corner. Close up here of that 360 degree light that's adjustable. And on the opposite side, you'll find your two suction hoses for drafting. Let's take a look at the top of the apparatus. You can see this is the main fill for the water tank for top fill. And then as we look forward to that, you'll find the foam tank for A. This is also a top fill location. This is a latched compartment. And in the center, you'll find your master stream device. And then just back to the rear of that, you'll find the fill location for your hydraulic reservoir. Looking into the compartments here, they have one dry deck storage and also additional lighting with inside each of the compartments. Look to the very forward of this compartment, you'll find a access point or plug-in for shore power. The protected device here is going to be your battery tender. This is the charger when plugged into shore power. Moving to the opposite side, once again, you can see you have decking material and also storage lighting. Let's go ahead and take a look at a general view here of the rear of the apparatus. First, we can take a look. These are the two rear facing discharge ports here. And then also the top fill location for your water fill. Then let's move over. This is going to be our hydraulic oil. And then this is your master stream device. As we look just to the left of the master stream, you'll find the fill location for your foam tank. This is foam A. And at the very top of your apparatus forward of the cab, you'll find two warning labels here for stepping in that area. Let's take a look at the compartments on the passenger side. You have a pullout and also an adjustable. In the upper corner, once again, 12 volt DC connection blocks. Center compartment, you have a tool compartment here. This door actually pulls outward and is adjustable front to back. Moving forward, you'll find two fixed shelves and also an adjustable shelf on the very bottom section. The upper corner also has that 12 volt access block. As we look between the wheels, you'll find additional bottle storage and straps for securing those bottles. And also located in the front section, you'll also find additional bottle storage. Let's go ahead and take a look at the pump panel area on this side. First, let's start at the very top. This is going to be your strainer. 
Moving just down from that, large diameter intake. You'll see behind the panel you have two override devices here for those discharges. At the very top, this is going to be a large diameter discharge, 2.5 inch. Just beneath that, an additional large diameter discharge. Both of these are controlled within those overrides electronic valves. Located in the center, you'll find your auxiliary 2.5 inch inlet. And across the very bottom, you'll find once again those discharge or drains. This is going to be the water strainer just above the large diameter. Let's take a look at the opposite side real quick. Once again, two large diameter discharges, two and a half inch, and then a large diameter just beneath that. Moving up from that location, same layout as the driver's side. And you can see here, this is the officer's side pre-connected. It has the capability of water foam and is green in color. Let's take a look just beneath the uh, apparatus here. You're going to find a warning label regarding hot exhaust and be careful uh, where you park. There's also going to be a front inlet drain. Here's a logo of your departments on the side of the door. Let's go ahead and move inside the cab of your apparatus. This is going to be the rear section from the driver's side. You can see the two rear facing SCBA seats and then just to the rear section you'll find additional storage locations. It has roll-up doors and we'll talk about some of the options within those compartments and also within your seating arrangement. You can see on the right hand side you have a fold down seat. This is the passenger side. David Clark head system just above that. The opposite side of this location is going to have a compartment storage. Overhead your heating and cooling. There's also a center mounted audible speaker located in the center for your main radio. And then just above, in between the operator, you'll find your David Clark head system. This is a master control here and also has access points. Located in the center of the compartment, you'll find adjustable shelving and also shore power plugs. Located at the very top, you can see uh, when plugged into shore power, these will be live. And above that, you'll find uh, access 12 volt blocks here for DC power. Located in the center between the two seats, you'll find your access for transmission and oil. These are for your daily checks. Let's go ahead and move just to the side slightly. You'll find an additional David Clark headset system plug-in. Looking forward of the cab. Let's go ahead and move now to the passenger side front seat. We'll take a look inside. The red strap on the right is to assist firefighters in and out of the cab. And in the uh, left hand side while sitting in the seat you'll find your foot pedals for air horn and mechanical siren. Located in the front section you'll find your computer or laptop storage location and to the left of that you'll find your siren brake and a radio push to talk button. Moving just forward of this location you're going to find one barrel style 12 volt and also a USB and at the very front your vehicle data recorder. Located over the officer head or passenger seat you'll find a speedometer. And located in the very center, you'll find this puck style red light indicating if lit that you have a compartment or door open. Let's go ahead and move now to the driver's side generalized view here as we look into the cab. Let's go ahead and start on the left door. You'll find your controls for the windows and also a warning label here. All of these warning labels will be on points of entry for your vehicle. Located underneath, you'll find your battery charger indicator shore power and air inlet. Let's take a look. Here's your auto charger. This is your plug-in for shore power in red and then your air inlet. Located as you enter the cab, you'll find the air horn and mechanical siren on the floor. As we move into the cab, you'll find your tech module, transmission ABS diagnostic ports, and then associated ABS engine diagnostic regen and DPF regen switches. Let's move up from this location. In red, you'll find a quarter turn battery switch. This is your master battery switch. We'll move to the opposite side of the steering column. You'll find a pump pressure and also a water tank indicator. Let's take a look here. This yellow placard is from Pierce Manufacturing. This is information for, for you for your manufacture date, job number, gross vehicle weight rating, VIN number, and also all of the fluid capacities for your apparatus. Also located on the A pillar of the operator, 
you'll find your VIN number. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the dash components now. Let's first start on the left hand side at the bottom you'll find your ignition, start, and at the very top in red, hazards. Moving to the front section of the dash you'll find a small switch labeled EM. That is going to be the switch which stands for Emergency Master. Got another image here, close up. This is going to be your parking lights, which is off parking lights and then headlights. And then to the right, you'll find your panel switch, which is a momentary rocker switch, which is for your dimming and brightening of the dash lights. Onto the column itself, you'll find your turn indicator, cruise control, and also flash for your headlights. General view here from the operator's position, look forward just to give you an idea. Let's look to the right hand side. You'll find your OK to engage the high idle and a green OK high idle switch. Looking at the dash components, we're going to start with transmission, oil, DEF, and water on the left. You have your tachometer and speedometer in the center. And on the right, you have your volts, fuel level, and front and rear air. And then you also have displays within the areas around this cluster. To the right, you'll find your Pierce Information Center. This is going to be a push button information center which provides a tremendous amount of information about your apparatus and also seat belt information. Let's move to the right, generalized view here of that area. Let's first start with your Allison transmission pad located almost in the center and you'll see an indicator here that says pump in neutral. Moving to the right at the very top, we're going to start with the siren brake. You have an air dump and also a load manager. We'll move down to the next set of switches. As we look at the next set of switches underneath that, I would like to just point out at the very top, there are some future locations, additional switches if you need, just above that also. Let's start down at the lower left with the engine brake on off. You also have an engine brake medium, low, and high, and also a protected switch here for your differential lock, differential lock engaged indicator, front wheel lock, and also your mirror heat. Let's move to the further right hand side. This is going to be your stationary OK to pump while rolling. You have your water pump and foam system. And then to the right, the round push button. This is going to be a push to talk for your David Clark head system. And then two additional future switch locations if needed. Just beneath that, you're going to find your siren control and also public announcement system. And there are some caution and warning labels. Up onto the very top, you're going to find your mirror control. And as we move to the very back half of this section, you'll find your PA system, uh, handheld microphone. Climate control located in the very front. Let's look overhead of the operator, first with the go light on the left hand side controls. And then let's take a look just in the center area. I should say on the left hand side, you'll find this yellow label. This yellow label is going to be from Pierce Manufacturing from when your vehicle left the manufacturer on the height 10 feet 1 inch the length 32 feet 2.37 inches, gross vehicle weight rating at 49,800 pounds, and then at the very bottom of that you'll find an additional location here for the job number of your vehicle. Let's move to the right of this placard and find your emergency master, roof light, front warning, side warning, lower rear warning, and upper rear warning. All of these switches have uh, indicators when they're on, they'll indicate in the green. Moving further to the right hand side, let's take a look at the next set of switches. You'll find your high beam flash, opticom, perimeter lighting, driver side scene, passenger side scene, and the rear scene. Same thing, green indicators when they're on. Moving further to the right, you'll find your traffic advisor. There is a split, flash, right and left, and also a low, high, and off. To the right, you'll also find the Pierce information here regarding your seat belts. Red indicating the seat is occupied but not belted. Green, occupied and belted. Just beneath that, you'll find your main unit radio. And then let's look all the way over to the passenger side. You'll find the go light control center here for the light on the passenger side. Congratulations Cowlitz to Washington on your new fire apparatus, job number 31142. If you have any questions regarding the content of this video or any future questions, 
please contact your Hughes Fire sales representative. Thank you and congratulations.